Okay, everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a text embedding using the OpenAI API. So if you're on the OpenAI documentation and you're struggling to really understand it and want to get going with a visual explainer, then this is the video for you. By the end, you will be able to take some text like this and turn it into a text embedding like this, all thanks to the Node.js app that we are going to be building. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Okay, so let's head over to the documentation first. Just head over to OpenAI and under API, just have a look at the docs because I want to walk you through it. So we're going to be creating embeddings. For those of you who don't know what embeddings are, it's essentially a number representation of a word that can actually help you with figuring out which word is similar to another one. So for example, if you had the word cat, uh, a computer might think a similar word to cat is something that it considers lexicographically similar. So for example, cat and cap might be considered similar by a computer. However, with vector embeddings, we are able to give semantic meaning to these words. So in other words, these little numbers right here will help the computer see the cat is in fact not very similar to cap, but it's more similar to dog. And that's all done by these numbers. And OpenAI lets you actually generate these embeddings so that you can essentially take them and essentially compare embedding to embedding in your own applications. So for this, I'm just gonna show you how to use the API documentation in order to do this with the Node.js backend. So let's go ahead and do it. It's all the way down here. So how to get embeddings, just select Node.js and where we could just go ahead and take all of this, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. So let's get up our code editor so I can show you how to use this. Now, we can just create a simple Node.js app. However, I'm gonna create a React application because I want to build an app that essentially has a front end and a back end, and we're going to essentially input words on the front end and then receive the text embedding back. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to create a new project. Uh, this is going to be a React project. And I'm going to go ahead and call this OpenAI Embeddings Demo. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is use this command in order to spin up a React application. If you're not using WebStorm, you're using something else, I would suggest going into a directory that you'd like to work in. So for example, mine is WebStorm projects. And then you can use npx create react app. Don't forget that's a space and this is a word by itself. So create react app. And then you can just use whatever you want to call it. Okay. So like that. This is essentially the equivalent, if you press enter, of me doing this, but I'm going to do it via WebStorm and I'm just going to click create. So now that is doing its thing. It's adding all the configuration and the files that we will need for this project. Okay, cool. Okay, so that is now done. And what that's done is spin up a React application for me. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that for now. And in the source directory, I'm actually going to get rid of everything. Okay, so we're going to keep this super basic. I'm going to delete the CSS files. We're not going to be doing any styling. Let's delete the text files. We're not going to be doing any tests. So delete that. And then I'm just going to delete these three files. So the logo, the web reports, and the setup for tests. Okay, delete anyway, and let's just delete the index CSS file too, because we don't need that. The only things we're going to need are the app.js file, which looks like this at the moment, but I'm going to actually get rid of everything. Okay, so just have a div. So the whole file should look like this. And then let's change this to a function expression, just because I prefer working function expressions. Okay, cool. So this is all you should have in here and in the index.js. Once again, we don't need this. We're not reporting anything. We don't need the CSS file. I'm going to get rid of the semicolons too. And then also get rid of that semicolon and remove the reporting of web vitals. So this is all that's in this file. This is all that's in this file. That's the only files you should have in the source directory. And now let's go ahead and create our server. So on the same level as the readme, I'm going to create a new file. Let's call this server.js add that and just paste in the code that we've got from here. So copy this and paste it. Now, the only thing you're going to need for this to work, this is going to be so super simple for the back end. Okay. As it is standing, I'm going to change this to be const 
opening I equals and then require and then you're also going to have to put in your API key here so an object with API key like so and then you're going to have to put in your open AI API key this can be found here under API keys you can create a new one so for example demo key create secret key and then just copy it and please don't share it because people can rack up loads on your credit card bills okay so great let's go back to the text embedding documentation and you can you know paste it here if you're just you know not sharing this on github or anything if you want to keep this key safe however i would suggest making a new file it's a dot env file so there's a tiny dot at the beginning there and then you know you can call this api key equals and then paste it like so just ignore that and now let's go back to the server just get rid of all this and you're going to use process env and whatever you called it in your env file i called the api key in order to pick it up from here but in order to use process env you're going to need another package so let's get up our terminal and i'm going to install well open ai of course and then also install the .env package. Okay, great. So that has now been installed back here. As you will see, there it is. If this isn't working in the future, please revert to the versions we are using and change them back to be exactly these. Okay, you could do it like so, and then just do npmi again to install them. Okay, but of course, I'm not going to do it now because I'm happy with them. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind for any project you are watching in the future. Let's also write a script. So start backend is going to be my script. And we're going to listen out to changes on the server. So you can do node server JS or to listen out for constant changes, you're going to need nodemon. So again, let's install that npm i nodemon and this will listen out for all the changes constant changes on my server.js file let's also change this to be start front end for when we want to start our front end so now we just need one more thing we need to actually use the dot env configuration so this is literally just from the documentation okay require dot env config and we can start our back end so all you're going to do is do npm run and then start backend, just like the script we wrote. And amazing, there we go. So that's run this code. Essentially, my text string went there and it created a text embedding for me. This is the array. Of course, we can't really see it. This is the whole object under embedding. So I can use dot data. So maybe let's do that dot data. And then it's an array. So we go into the first object. So that's the object to get the embedding. So dot embedding. So maybe let's do cat. So let's turn cat into an embedding. And ta-da, that's what it looks like. That's the word cat in a number format, I guess, for a text embedding. It's a whole array of numbers, which is very, very long. So that's cool, right? That's really it. However, I did say that I'm going to connect this to a front end so that people can essentially type stuff and then they get the embedding back to them from the front end. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's just comment this out so it stops making uh, calls to OpenAI. So as you can see here, we've essentially got OpenAI and by getting OpenAI, I've got all the wonderful methods and properties come, that come with it, including OpenAI embeddings and then the method create. And we pass through an object like this. So essentially we're defining the model that we are using. We're then also putting in the input of what we want to turn into embedding. And then we also put in the encoding format. Okay, so this is all thanks to OpenAI. Great, and then of course we get the embedding back and we console log it out. Now in order to hook this up to a front end, we're gonna to have to define our back end. So we're gonna to have to define a port. Um, let's say the port is 8000. I'm gonna say this is const port. We're also gonna need the package express. So const express require express. Um, and then we're also going to need the package cause so we can get rid of any pesky cause error messages that we might get. Now, once we get the package express and essentially save it to the const express, we need to release all of the wonderfulness that comes with it. So let's get it and call it to release all of the methods and properties that come with it and save it under the const app. 
So now app has all the methods and properties, one of them being app use, and then we're going to get cause and call it to get rid of any cause error messages. And then we're also going to use apps, uh, app use express JSON. So we can pass a JSON around from the front end to the back end. Another one we're going to use is app listen to listen out for constant changes on the back end. So we're going to pass through the port and then a callback function. And then we're just going to do console log listening on port and then the port number. Okay, so this just means that we can see here um, listening on port 8000. However, we need to install some more packages. So let's stop this from running and I'm going to do NI express to install it as well as NPMI cores to install the course package also. So great. Now we have all the packages. Um, let's start this again. So NPM run start backend. And great, listening on port 8000. Cool. So now we essentially want to write a route to our backend so we can send information from the front end to the backend. And it is a post request. So thanks to Nime, our post. And then maybe we get embedding. You can write the endpoint as whatever you wish. I'm just going to make that smaller. It is an async function, so that is correct. And we're going to essentially attach some text to the request body. Okay, so for example, we can attach text like so, and let's save it maybe as the const text. Okay, so that's what we have done. And now what I'm going to do is essentially get all of this. So let's just get this right here and paste it and uncomment it out. So once again, we are getting the const embedding. We await OpenAI embeddings create, we pass through the model that we want to use, the input. However, this is going to be the text that we pass through from the front end. So just get rid of that and replace it like so with some code. And then let's just console log what we get back. So we can reuse what we did before if we just want to get the embedding. However, we also want to send this over to the front end, but we'll do that when it time comes. So that's really it we're going to write for now. Let's go to the front end. So first off, let's actually start the front end. I'm going to create a new tab. I'm going to do npm run. And then whatever we wrote the start script as, I remember it was start front end. So just hit that. And this should open up in localhost 3000. Of course, it's going to be empty because we got rid of anything. But I'm going to go ahead and also in here, just add an input. It's a self-closing element and also a button that will allow us to submit when we are happy. So I'm just going to essentially uh, save to state whatever we type in this input. And you do so like this. So set text e target value. So we're getting the value of the input element. Okay. And now we need to import React. So import use state from React to be more specific. So we can save stuff to state. So now I can essentially use text set text and essentially use state works that we are saying that this string, which is an empty string, I'm assigning to the value text. And if we want to change that, we use set text, which I've used there. So whenever we type in the input, I'm just going to console log this out for you now. So let's just inspect this so we can see the console log. I can type hello, and that is the text being console logged out. So we're saving the text to state. That is great. However, we also want to send it over to the back end, right? So we can get a response and we do that on click of this. So on click of this, we're going to do get embedding and let's write our function now. So const get embedding is going to be an async function. That is right. And we're going to use the await fetch in order to go to localhost. 8000 because that is our port forward slash embedding because that is the endpoint that we wrote. And in here, we're going to have to pass through the method and it is a post method. Headers we're also going to pass through uh, is as we are working with JSON and as the body. Well, yes, we're going to pass through the text. So again, request body dot text and actually a shortened way of writing this as it's the same is just to pass through the text like so. Great. Okay, so once that comes back to us, I'm going to save this as a response just like so. And then we get the response. 
and then get its JSON, but uh-oh, this is an async function, so we need to await it. And we're gonna save this under the const data, just like that. Okay, and then let's console log out the data. Cool, so let's check this works. In fact, on the server, of course, we're getting the request body text, but I'm just going to console log out the whole request so you can see it as well. So let's do it. So I, what should we turn into an embedding? I think the word cat submit. And then if we look in here on the server, you will see this is the whole request. This whole huge object is the request keeps going. Okay. Okay, it's got query, it's got params. It should also have body on here. So let's just keep going. In fact, we can just search body. Okay, and with the body, we have the text and cat, because that's what you wrote. So that's what I mean by the request. The whole object is the request. We do dot body and then we use dot text in order to get the text of cat. And that's essentially what we're saving under the const text. And that's what we're sending over to OpenAI. And we are essentially getting this whole text embedding back because that is what represents a cat. And to send it back to our front end, we need to use res send. So we're going to send all of that over like so. Let's just get rid of this here and maybe let's get rid of this console log. And now we can actually get that response and instead of console logging it out in the front end, I'm actually going to set the response so we can store it here as the data. So set response, which means we can save it to state. So response, set response. And then I can use the response to show it maybe in a paragraph element just like so. So let's try it out. So once again, I'm gonna do cat submit and ta-da, that is the whole vector embedding for the word cat. This is cool. If you wanna build an app that kind of gets you the embedding really, really quick and maybe charge people for it, this is how you would do it. Of course, you probably need to set up some kind of payment or perhaps people need to put in their own API. It is totally up to you. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit more today about text embeddings in general. And thanks very much for watching.